you just never know where those conversations are going to take you. Hey, oh, welcome back to the Wild Business Growth Podcast presented by Hippo Direct. This is your place to hear from a new entrepreneur or innovator every single week who's unleashing creativity to grow bigger and better businesses. I'm Max Brandstetter, digital marketing dude at Hippo Direct, and this is episode 20. For episode 20, we have an amazing guest out from Mostly Sunny LA. It's Rebecca Radice. She's an award-winning marketing influencer, especially in the social media space. She's the founder of Rebecca Radice Media, Radiant LA, the CMO of Post Planner, and has done much, much more. Stay tuned to hear her amazing radio voice, her thoughts on social media in this day and age, and what you can do every single day, and how to achieve that elusive work-life balance that so many of us struggle to attain. It's a wonderful episode from the Hollywood Hills, so stay tuned, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All righty, we are here for another edition of the Wild Business Growth Podcast presented by Hippo Direct. Here this time with a very special episode featuring the award-winning marketer, author, speaker. We could go on and on and on, but Rebecca Radis. I probably said that incorrectly. I rehearsed it and everything too. But Rebecca, how are you doing? Oh, you actually got it right. All Yay. Right. Perfect. <laughs> All right. I'm, just, I'm, I'm extremely humble. You'll learn very quickly. So. Oh, no, no. <laughs> it, 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 it is one of those things. I get radish, radish, you know, rad ice, you name it. So <laughs> the fact that you got it right out of the gate is pretty awesome. Perfect. All right. I'm doing a giant check mark on my whiteboard here is how many times I wrote your name out rehearsing it. But <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca, no, you're award winning marketer. You are the founder and head of Rebecca Redis Media, Radiant LA. You're also the CMO of Post Planner. But for anybody that's not really familiar with your story, do you mind going a little bit and give a brief summary of your background, how you got into what you're doing and what's the main thing you're focusing on today? Yeah, absolutely. And thanks so much for having me here. Fun to finally get to talk off of just social media. Of course. Crazy how it works in this world, huh? Good starts starts on social media. And next thing you know, you're recording a podcast that you're going to promote on social media. So it's crazy. <laughs> yes, indeed. There you go. I know. Well, so a little bit about my background uh, and how I got into the crazy world of social media. Back in 2004 is really when I dipped my toe into blogging, recognized mm -hmm. that there was a huge opportunity to, uh, I, I love to write. So to really be able to share what I was most passionate about with uh, an audience, at least I hoped at the time, that would be interested in what I was writing. And as social media really became prevalent, I recognized the opportunity, not just for my business, uh, but for those that I could train as well, how to use social media, how to use blogging really as a platform, a way to build authority, build credibility, uh, create mm -hmm. that community around their business. So my previous career was radio. I did uh, morning radio for a decade. And after well, I was going to say your, your podcast slash radio voice is fantastic. So <laughs> clearly <laughs> you well, can tell you, you got some experience there. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it was, it was wonderful experience. Who knew at the time that it would set me up for podcasting video, everything that we're doing today <laughs> as marketers. Right. That from there, I went into real estate and did that for several years and through all of that, uh, really learned the skills behind marketing and everything that I was doing offline that I started to transition into the online world. And so much of that became training. And I quickly recognized that that was really my passion, which is where my business was born out of being a digital marketing training and development firm. It's just been such a, a pleasure over the last 20 years, which is crazy to me to even believe, um, <laughs> the, just the thousands of people that I've had the honor 
to work with, to train, uh, and to really help them build that authority brand, which you talk about podcasts, and that is what my podcast is all around. Right. Is, how, how do you take who you are and what you do and everything that you know uh, and translate that into a story that's very relatable to your audience? So anyway, long story short, there's a whole lot in my background, like I think we all have, and all of mm-hmm. that has, I think, served me very well. Well, and what I've been able to bring to not only my business, but all of my training. That's fantastic. And I have to ask, so you've been in a few really quite different industries, been the radio industry, the whole real estate world. I'm sure you have a fantastic real estate voice as well. (laughs) Did you always know that you were going to be an entrepreneur? Like where, how did that come about for you? Yeah, that's a that's a really great question. And I don't know that I knew that I was going to be an entrepreneur, but it was certainly in my blood, you know, starting at eight year, years old. So I grew up in Southern California, where I live today. And we were really fortunate. The house I was in, I had probably 20, 30 different fruit trees and everything from lemon to peaches to oranges, you name it. And we had a huge school right behind me. And I figured out that, hey, we have a whole lot of fruit that we can't eat. And I started to sell it. Yeah, somewhere, you know, age seven, age eight, I would just set up instead of a lemonade stand, I had my fruit stand. (laughs) And over the next couple of years, I definitely think the bug bit me pretty hard when I recognized, hey, I can go to the store, I can go buy something that I want to buy without having to beg my parents for money. And so it became uh, very lucrative, at least for, a you know, eight and then nine year old at the time. And yeah, so I I I don't know that I I totally recognized it, but I definitely saw the writing on the wall from a a very early age that controlling my own destiny and being able to chart my own path was something I was was very passionate about. And so as I moved, went to college and uh, went to college for communications and then into radio, that's a space that while you're in the corporate world, and it was excellent experience in that sense, uh, I, you still have a lot of creative freedom and you have a lot of creative control over what you do and what you say and how you're showing up to the world. And so I think that definitely set the tone and the pace for me and helped me see that I had a bigger story within me and that I wanted to get out and really share that with a a bigger group of people. And I had the opportunity to uh, move into real estate and purchased my own company and had just a a phenomenal experience within that. Left from there, went to Better Homes and Gardens, uh, where I helped launch uh, their real estate uh, arm of the brand and got them all onto social media. Hard to believe they weren't even on social media at the time, Um, had just really (laughs) gotten started. And so it's been a, a varied corporate background with entrepreneur experience, but my brand has remained the same. Uh, since 2004, since, like I said, I really got started. And so that's what I think I've been most passionate about is helping people find their own groove, whether they're an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, whether uh, they know that they want to step out from that corporate world, helping them figure out how exactly to go about doing that. Well, you clearly have a passion for helping others. You have a passion for fruit. I'm sure you have a passion for passion fruit. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And now, uh, I definitely have a passion for fruit. That's for sure. <laughs> that's a really cool story. That's refreshing. I mean, you hear from, you know, countless entrepreneurs, the lemonade stand story. So it's, it's cool that you yours is a little bit different, the fruit stand story. So I love that. In terms of helping others, what's the main thing you are doing today to help out others? 
Yeah, so it really is all born out of my own experience. So, you know, finding what has worked, what hasn't over the years and uh, formulating. I've put together an entire process called the prep performance method. And mm -hmm. through prep, uh, it's helping people plan, research, execute, and profit from a digital marketing strategy. So it's everything from the setup to figuring out, you know, where where should you be showing up and how how do you show up in the online world to researching, you know, who your audience is and where are they spending their time to the execution piece, which is where I see so many people fall down. You know, we get super excited in the planning stages of, uh, you know, I, I want to be on Facebook and I want to be on Twitter and I want to be on Instagram and I want to utilize email marketing and all these cool tools that we have available to us. And then we kind of do the research where, you know, we kind of figure out, oh, I know who my audience is. I know where they're spending time. But execution, we tend to fall down in. And that's where I really help people pull it all together together where they they can consistently execute upon a digital marketing strategy that leads into social selling into a profitable sales strategy again another top issue that i have recognized over the years is that elusive roi we all talk about so much mm -hmm. of why am I spending so much time creating content and uh, showing up across all of these different locations, all of these different platforms, yet, <laughs> not to tie it back to fruit, but fruits of my labor. <laughs> I'm not seeing any. Right. <laughs> and so, yeah, just to, that, that, is, uh, that is really where I am spending the majority of my time these days is working with entrepreneurs to enterprise, help them put those, those foundational pieces into place so that they aren't wasting their time, that they're not spinning their wheels and feeling as if, hey, I'm, I'm doing all of this, but I'm not seeing anything from it. And I, I think we've all been there, done that, and know how incredibly frustrating it really is when you get through a full year or you know, even just a few weeks or months and recognize that what you've put in place, you're, you're not getting anywhere. It's not actually creating new customers or new clients for your business. Right. And by the way, no need to hold back on the fruit puns. We could, if you want to do a fruit tie in for every section we have here today, we'll make this the fruit episode. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. I take that as a challenge. <laughs> okay. All right. Looking forward to the banana in the last segment. You're, of course, a, a social media expert and an influencer, and you're helping so many entrepreneurs with their social media brands for both their businesses and their personal brands out there. What is your biggest argument today when somebody says social media is just not working for me? Like the old school marketing methods have been effective in, in converting leads for me, but I, this whole social media thing, I'm really not seeing it. What's, where do you start from there? Because as you mentioned, I'm sure you get that all the time. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it's it's that argument. And it's also the industry. It just doesn't work for my industry uh, <laughs> or my niche. Or I, I just, I, I work within an industry that's not so sexy. So people don't care. And to that, you know, I say, First of all, if you don't work social media, it's just like anything else. It's not going to work for you. If you don't consistently show up, if you don't have a system and processes and tools in place that do a lot of the heavy lifting for you, then yeah, no, it, it's just not going to work because you're probably haphazardly going about it. So, so much of it takes putting that planning in place. Uh, right. And a lot of times you need to take a step back to move forward in a very productive way. You know, so many jumped into social media because they felt they had to, uh, mm -hmm. because their competitors were out there, because everybody was telling them, this is absolutely where you have to be. Uh, but they did it without really understanding what they wanted to accomplish with social media. So what they want to get out of it. So oftentimes it's taken a little bit of a step back, slowing down down to speed up 
for just, you know, even a couple of weeks to be able to take that step back and clearly be able to see, okay, here's where I want to head. Uh, here's the steps I'm going to take to actually get there. And this is what success looks like for us. And that's another big piece too. You know, for mm -hmm. a lot of people that say social media isn't working for them, it's because they really don't know what does success look like? And if they have a team, they haven't rallied their team around that goal line either. So it can be as simple as uh, just getting everybody into alignment and getting everybody on the same page as to where do we want to go? How do we want to get there? And then what are those steps we're going to take every single day without fail? And I love your point on when people say, oh, you know, social media is not right for my brand. Because you've seen, especially in the recent years, how brands in so many different categories and industries, and, and just to, to name drop a few, these are obviously big names, but brands like Wendy's and Moon Pie, you know, brands like that were viewed as more traditional. And then you see them on Twitter just absolutely disrupting everything and growing huge followings. And if you can make a moon pie talk, I mean, what, <laughs> what can't you do on social <laughs> So true. In terms of the clients that you've helped out with, can you, you don't have to name the client's names, but what sort of range of different industries do they work in? I mean, what sort of variety have you seen there? Oh gosh, you, you name the industry and our team has touched it. Uh, so whether it's retail or the food industry, which you were just talking about, uh, or nonprofits, we really define ourselves as industry agnostic because we know that what we teach, what we train can really layer over any situation, any industry. And my belief is that that is exactly what a good digital strategy should do. It shouldn't be difficult. It shouldn't be heavy. It shouldn't be burdensome. It shouldn't be overwhelming. It should come in and complement who you are, what you do, everything that you've put into place up until this point, and then allow you to get out there, do what you do best, but consistently show up. Because especially when you see entrepreneurs, and I'm sure you see this all day long, you guys are so active across social media that, you know, there are people that seemingly are showing up all over the place and probably creating a whole lot of content and more than likely wasting a whole lot of time with those, those pieces that they just haven't systematized, they haven't put processes in place. So, you know, it's, it's comes back and I probably talk, I probably Probably preach <laughs> process <laughs> and systems and tools till my team rolls their eyes back in their head. But again, it works for any industry. Whether you think your audience is online or not, they absolutely are. Um, you know, we have one one client that works uh, that is a nonprofit and works with uh, families that have just found out or that their child has just been diagnosed um, with a life threatening mm -hmm. disease, and they have built the most amazing community across social media in just the conversations that they have, the uh, type of content that they are sharing that allows them to shine a light on the people that they help and really has built this community of support throughout where people can go and they can find other people that are dealing with the same exact situation. So yeah, you know, like I said, no matter the industry, you're going to find people that have a very similar problem and a problem that you have a solution for. And that's really what social media is all about, isn't it? It's allowing us to create a community around problems and solutions and have those open conversations in a space that feels very safe. That's wonderful. And I, I really appreciate your kind words. And I totally agree with that. I mean, you've built quite the community yourself what what would you say is the biggest way that social media has been helpful for your business or your business is actually yeah i i would definitely say opening doors <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, you know, even from the early days, I remember back when I hopped on Twitter in 2009, 
<laughs> I, I, yeah, I was just a, a voyeur. You know, I was, I was connecting with people like authors and artists right. that I had followed for so long. And all of a sudden, there was no barrier. I could have conversations with them. They right. would actually tweet you back. You know, it was, it was <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I know it was just crazy to even think of. And that has been the biggest opportunity where I could connect with people, where I could have conversations with people that I would never have the chance to otherwise. And just like you and I having a conversation here on a podcast today, same situation where you found yourself having a conversation on Twitter or on Facebook or over on Instagram that blossomed into an email conversation about mm -hmm. a potential project or maybe a speaking opportunity. And so it, you just never know where those conversations are going to take you. And when you show up with that open mind, when you show up thinking, um, I'm just going to be here, you know, to give, I'm going to be here to share some insight or to ask a question or just to give some support, some feedback back to people. You, you just never know where that might end up down the road. And I can look back at the hundreds of speaking opportunities I've had over the years. And every single one of those came from that conversation. And so I really am a firm believer that everything begins with that hello, that simple conversation starter. And when you commit to doing that, those doors swing wide open. And then when you're willing to step into them, the sky is the limit into what social media can truly do for anybody in any business. It's an open door policy. Twitter is the great door opener as long as you keep your mind open to it. But with open doors does come a big time commitment, as you know, very well. And it's, it can be so time consuming, managing your different accounts and interacting with people, engaging with people on social media. How do you do it? Do you have a daily routine uh, with, you know, how much time do you spend per day with, with Twitter and your other social accounts? And, and how do you plan everything out? Ooh, that's a, that's a big one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> to unpack all of that. Yeah, I'm asking the big questions here, just trying to, you know, keep those doors open, you know? Yes. Well, it's, yes, to uh, your question about do I have a plan? Yes, absolutely. And do I monitor my time? Absolutely. I make sure that I'm popping in. So for me, it's, it's hopping in three times a day. So uh, in the morning, in the afternoon, and just before I shut everything down in the evening, I'll check back. So it's giving myself about 15 minutes Mm -hmm. early in the afternoon and then later um, with very specific goals. So I'm checking things like my mentions. I'm checking things like uh, my blog and shares and people that have you know mentioned me across the web and making sure that I'm responding, I'm thanking people, making sure that I'm getting back to people with any questions. So it's being very strategic in how I am using that time as well so that I'm not hopping on and finding myself, you know, 15, 30 minutes, 45 minutes down the road. All I've been doing is aimlessly scrolling through the feed or hopping on to Instagram and double tap, double tap, double tap, which we can <laughs> all do. <laughs> which, I, which I swear makes your thumbs very tired. <laughs> Absolutely, right? Yeah, we are worn out after that. <laughs> We are Instagram. Oh, especially yeah. with Instagram being so being so, well, it used to be so one dimensional. Now they've added a lot of more features to it, but still like being the first thing that everybody thinks of. It's yeah, we need to start doing some thumb workouts or th thumb Pilates or something here. <laughs> <laughs> Some Pilates. I like it. <laughs> well, we and, and, and that's, that comes back to that strategy first, you know, idea of what do you want to get out of Instagram or Twitter or Facebook? And so what are those things that make the most sense for you every single day? Is it that uh, you need to do outreach? So networking, that could be a really big one where you're going to reach out every single morning to 
woo five new people. Um, maybe you're going to tweet mm -hmm. five new people every single day. Maybe you're going to visit five new profiles on LinkedIn um, and, and make some new connections. So thinking about where do you need to show up? What is going to give you the biggest bang for your buck out of your time and making sure that you get those into your calendar. So if you use something as simple as uh, a Google Calendar, putting it into your calendar that, hey, these are the five things I'm going to do every single morning during my 15 minutes, and I'm going to do it without fail. So you treat it just like you would any other commitment within your calendar. So if you and I were meeting for coffee, I'd have that in my calendar, and I'd make sure I showed up there on time, and I'd be prepared. And you need to do the same exact thing with social media, because if you're not prepared, if you don't go into it knowing what you want to get out of it, what exactly uh, those tasks within your day are, you are. You're going to fritter away your time. You're going to wonder, mm -hmm. wait a second, what did I actually do? Where? <laughs> Once you <laughs> come up for, for air. And this is exactly what leads to your question earlier or your, your pushback earlier, which is, well, I'm not getting anything out of social media. Well, it doesn't do anything for my business. Well, of course it doesn't. You don't even know why you're using it or what, what you're doing on a <laughs> yep. daily basis. So there's no way you're going to get anything out of it. Right. And I, I'll remotely high five you for the five people a day philosophy. I love the philosophy. I think anybody can do it. It doesn't take too much time, but literally I think five people you want to reach out to and whether that's over email or social media. I mean, I've implemented this strategy as far as reaching out to podcast guests. <clears throat> no, but yeah. I, uh, it's, it's an effective strategy. And yeah, you'll probably, people will probably either ignore you or maybe even turn you down more than they say yes. But think of the alternative. If you weren't reaching out to people at all, then you're not getting anywhere. So it's super effective. And I have to thank you, Rebecca, for responding to our hippo mentions and hippo gifs there on Twitter. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and, and you prove your point. You were diligent. Mm -hmm. And I barely check Twitter DMs these days. I don't know about you, but they're just so <laughs> spammy. I know it's it's a it's a lost start. You got to be careful. Well, DMs, DMs in general, they're an effective way to reach people. Obviously, directly and especially on Instagram, that's getting bigger. But yeah, the downside of that is there's so much spam. I can only imagine what you're going through. So sometimes it takes reaching out in more ways than one. It, it really does. And and you had uh, a three pronged approach in that, <laughs> w which totally worked. But you. Uh, I think you made so many great points in there about being diligent and committing to it every single day and that uh, you are, if you're getting more no's than yeses, you're doing your job because that means you're putting it out there. That means you're, mm -hmm. you're reaching out to people and not everybody is going to be the perfect fit for your podcast or for your blog or whatever it is, whatever your ask is, but the right people are going to say yes. And that's the mm -hmm. cool part when you commit to that process is you're going to start to make those really cool connections and you're going to start to find those people that again, going back to the doors of opportunity, you just have no idea, you know, where mm -hmm. that, that could possibly take you or take your business for that matter. But you do have to be a bit fearless in getting out there and knowing that just because people didn't respond doesn't mean it's a no either. You know, for me, I dismissed it. I didn't see your DM, but you tweeted me <laughs> and that caught my attention. Uh -huh. um, yeah. <laughs> yes. Power of Twitter yet again. <laughs> yep, exactly. So yeah, you just got to find, find where that person is spending their time. This goes back to the research too, is know your audience, know where uh, you can connect with them, but also have that, that three-pronged approach like you did. Be willing to show up in other locations and hope that you can catch their attention. Because I'll tell you, some people... Uh, I'm I'm always amazed, and I'm sure you are, that it, it could take a month 
to hear back from some mm -hmm. people oh, and yeah. you might have written them off. You might have thought, oh, well, I'm never going to hear back. And they, <laughs> you know, they finally get around to it. But if you had stopped, if you had said, oh, you know, I didn't hear back from them. So, oh, I probably shouldn't bother them anymore. Well, no, you may just need to go about it a little bit different. It's amazing. Some people you may expect to hear back kind of quick from and like you said it's over a month and then other people sometimes it's maybe you you're not as familiar with them or haven't interacted with them as much and then they get back to you later that day and say all right let's get this on the books let's get this rolling so it's really it's really you never know but yep. to your point you can't have fear in this age of social media you got to be fearless hi this is greg Brandstetter, founder of hippo direct has all this wild growth talk made you hungry for some new customers? Well, here's your recipe for success. Hippo Direct can help you acquire new clients using proven methods such as postal mailings, email marketing, and targeted ads on Google, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We can even create a customized leads and prospecting database for you. So check out hippodirect.com and contact us today. Let's shift gears to a segment on inspiration and creativity. So we love diving into what makes people click? What gets them going? What are your sources of inspiration? How you stay so creative? So first question on that is, what's the biggest thing that you do to stay creative? Unplug. That would be my biggest one. Um, not being connected 24-7. And I, I made a big commitment uh, several years ago to just step away. You know, we are in it so often, whether it's on our mobile or on our computer, if it's in front of people, we are talking social media, we are just inundated by all of it uh, so often. And I found that that was really sapping me of all of my creativity. And so I found a really <laughs> easy way. I have two little chihuahuas. <laughs> uh, so several times a day, I'll just get up if I happen to be in my office that week and take them for a quick walk around the block. So, it, you know, whatever it mm -hmm. is that can help you just step away from everything that's tugging at you and put that phone down, just walk away. Even if it's, you know, walking outside your building, whether it's going to grab a cup of coffee, whatever it is that you can fit into your day. I find unplugging is the key to bringing that creativity back. I am still really old school about writing. And so I buy these, I love really, really pretty binders and I will take that and sometimes just go sit. You know, I'm in Southern California, so I have the luxury of being able to go sit by my pool. Um, and so okay. sometimes I'll do that where, you know, I'll just go sit and, and just let the ideas flow. But again, it's, it's really unplugging and not letting all those DMs or those notifications. That's a big one for me too. I have most notifications turned off on my mobile, uh, mm -hmm. except for certain things like Slack where, you know, I'm communicating with my, my team all day, but giving yourself that freedom to know not have to respond in the moment every single moment and with your chihuahuas i have to ask were you a fan of the yokiero taco bell chihuahua that campaign <laughs> back oh of course yeah absolutely and my guys aren't that tiny they're <laughs> they're about eight pounds so they're okay. they're a little bit bigger so they can keep up with the walks and right <laughs> love 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 to get out so you know it was a win-win for both of us and that's why i say you know you have to find what works for you but creativity is a tough one i don't know about it you is. but yeah it, it, you know, it's hard, especially when you wear so many hats on a daily mm -hmm. basis. And if you're trying to go from one task to the next, say, you know, as a CMO, going from operations over to creating marketing campaigns, that's a tough transition. And you've got to find ways, creative ways, to give yourself some some buffers between those and like i said i just found that uh getting outside getting into the sunshine again very fortunate that we have a lot of that uh and for right. most days except today where we're getting rain it, it, you know it's a it's a great way for me to recharge my batteries well jealous of your sunshine it's actually sunny here today in new york it's just i 
would bet that it's a little bit warmer by you. But what about people? <laughs> so in terms of inspiring people, who would you say has been your biggest influence in the business world? Ooh, gosh, I have I have so many of those. Uh, I would say Ariana Huffington has uh, been a woman mm -hmm. that I am so inspired by. I, you know, mentioned that writing has always been a, a passion, really words. So being in radio was the spoken word. It was the written word. Um, and she has always been so eloquent in everything she does, everything she says, everything she writes in how she translates all of that. Just always really spoke to me as a woman, but also as a businesswoman and somebody recently that has uh, been so inspiring to me is Mel Robbins. And I had, I don't know if you've read her, her book, The Five Second Rule, but listening to her story was so empowering just to hear that, you know, no matter where we are in our business, and she was a high powered attorney, no matter where you are, what stage you are in your life, we all have those moments where we need to pick our ourselves up and dust ourselves off. Um, and so to be able to relate and connect with that uh, was something I think that after, you know, 20 years of being in this business really, really spoke to me. Certainly there's plenty of men out there as well. I think mm -hmm. uh, Darren Hardy is definitely uh, one of them for me. I I'm talking big names. <laughs> but there are people every single day that are, you know, not as well known that I see what they're doing within their lives and their businesses. And it it's encouraging. And I think that's the beauty of social media too, at least for me, is that I can keep up with people that I may not know, know, know them, so I don't know the intricate details of their lives and businesses, but I can see, you know, what they're putting out there and what they're creating in the world, and it's just so encouraging to me that we can share in that way in this day and age where other people can be inspired by our own stories, by the content we're creating, by uh, the stories that we are telling on a daily basis. And we may not even know uh, the people that we're inspiring, but you know, like I said, I think it's uh, it's it's both a very cool opportunity and it's also a way for us to be able to connect with people in a way that we would have never thought possible, you know, even 10 years ago, let alone 20 years ago when I first got started in this. So anyway, yeah. lots of people that inspire me and it's a, a wide range and variety as I'm sure it is for you as well. And I, I just find myself incredibly blessed that I find new people every single day too, you know, whether it's on Twitter or Instagram that you go, how did I not know about this person? They're doing amazing stuff. Yeah. Out there mm -hmm. yeah it's like it's back to that those open doors that you were talking about they're really the internet and social media have completely just revolutionized everything and it's so easy to stumble on people every single day that have developed you know these huge or interesting brands or are just doing really really cool things out there so it's a it's definitely a fun era to live in We are going to transition to a, new, a different segment here, a recurring segment on the Wild Business Growth Podcast. This is the Wild Business Shoutout of the Week. The Wild Business Shoutout of the Week! Oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> I <laughs> love you. it. I Thank you. Uh, yeah, if, if that part of the business really picks up, I might just drop everything and become a harmonic <laughs> followist. <laughs> but... Wild Business Shout Out of the Week. This is where we talk about a recent marketing campaign or advertising campaign that caught our attention and chat about a little bit. So earlier, you know, before you started talking about fruit, <laughs> we were talking about pancakes and burgers. Can you speak a little bit about that campaign that caught your eye earlier this year? Mmm, pancakes and burgers. Oh, mm. it's almost lunchtime <laughs> here. I'm I'm getting hungry. Oh um, my god. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Well, we were both in agreement that the IHOP, so International House of Pancakes campaign that they ran earlier this year was something that as marketers really caught 
our attention. And it was interesting to watch this unfold because certainly this could have blown up in their face. It really could have gone a different (laughs) direction. And instead, it turned out to be quite brilliant. So for those that don't know, IHOP had announced that it was going to rebrand itself as IHOB. And everybody, especially Twitter, was in an uproar. It was a mystery what that B actually stood for. Well, it turned out that the B stood for burgers, as you said, and it was very clever the way they did it because they were flipping the P, so they were using the whole concept of flipping pancakes and flipping that P to a B. Uh, And it created a huge amount of buzz because you can imagine IHOP's been around for quite a while. They have a huge community built around the idea that they are a pancake place, that they are Mm -hmm. a breakfast location. And really what they were doing was uh, helping shift some of that focus over to lunch and dinner, which they weren't as popular for. Um, and yeah. being able to, yeah, draw those crowds in for lunch as well as dinner. Now, of course, they went back to IHOP. It was all one <laughs> big joke. It wasn't, <laughs> yeah, it was, they, they really got us. We all got got there. <laughs> yes, we did indeed, right? I, I mean, I think we were all sitting there going, there's absolutely no way they're doing this. Right. You know, there's obviously something here. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know. Well, think of any other big brand. If they were to just take a letter, flip it upside down and say, hey, we actually stand for something different now. I mean, people would be completely shocked, completely up in arms about it. But they really, they nailed it. I mean, it was such a unique campaign. What was so genius about it was they didn't do it and come out right away and said, hey, this is what it stands for. And this is what it is. They really got the buzz going. And I think it was a solid week or two weeks that people were guessing, as you said, like crazy, what's the B, you know, is it burritos? Is it baseball? Is it bananas? But (laughs) it, it was, they, they just had the internet going crazy and they captured that attention for such a long time, which is so hard to do in these, this day and age. And they got the attention of all these other brands, even other brands in the restaurant industry, like Wendy's of course commented on it. And I know many others did as well. And I know the the DJ Diplo even changed his name to Diplo with a B for a little while. (laughs) So it just... The impact was huge. Yeah, such an incredible campaign. And the fact, and um, people will be talking about that one for, for years and years. Well, and I think there's so much to learn within that, isn't there? You you talked mm-hmm. so much about fear in relation to reaching out, but uh, also letting go of the fear when you know your brand, you know your audience, and you know that they adore. They adore what you are bringing to, to them every single day. But hey, in their case, They also did lunch and dinner really well, in their opinion, Mm -hmm. and not enough people knew about it. So what did they do? They created a huge amount of buzz around the brand itself. So there's, yeah, there's a lot to learn when you look at how they went about doing it, especially the fact that they let it go on as long as they did. That's where (laughs) the whole negativity really could have come in, but instead people were so speculative, you know, they just had so much fun trying to figure out exactly what it could mean that I would love to see the numbers. I don't know that I have just on their sales uh, and, Mm -hmm. and what it did Yeah, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner sales within that. But I got to say, you know, we're on this whole uh, food kick, especially on (laughs) Twitter. You're going to sign off to go eat lunch, aren't you? (laughs) That's right. Between Wendy's and IHOP and, you know, Denny's. Denny's is crushing it on Twitter. So there are, I don't care, the industry, and we talked about this earlier, there are just so many terrific brands that if you're an entrepreneur these these days, take a look at what brands are doing to create conversation to right. really humanize their brands as well. Because I think that's a big shift we've seen over the last couple of years too, is they're no longer a brand talking to their audience. They're a person. They're a name um, attached to the brand that has really humanized that conversation. I think that's what IHOP did with that 
entire campaign. Just a warning here, Rebecca, you might have started a whole full on breakfast war here between <laughs> Denny's and I. Not that, not that they're not competing already, but who, who knows? Maybe Denny's will come up with a, a letter flipping campaign or something, something up next. But they're, yeah, they're absolutely crushing on social media too. Two more quicker segments to wrap up here. First one is the unusual. So this is all about pet peeves, quirks, weird talents, things that people don't discuss that often, but are just fascinating. First question there, what is your biggest pet peeve? Mm-hmm. That's, a, <laughs> that's a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> Especially if you think about with social media. So I would have to say, if we're talking about just living in the online world, spam invites have to be my one of my top pet peeves. You know, whether it's LinkedIn, so this is the latest craze with LinkedIn is uh, you connect with somebody and they all of a sudden think that they have the right to start emailing you offers, um, just spamming mm-hmm. you with all kinds of offers or Maybe it's somebody on Facebook that is spamming you with, you know, their client groups or their company pages. People just need to stop with that. You know, (laughs) we live in a permission-based environment and all of that is assuming. They're assuming that I want to connect. They're assuming that because we connected on LinkedIn, I now want to connect with you on email and it's absolutely not the case. You know, if you have not nurtured that relationship, you have not earned the right to take that relationship from where you've connected to anywhere else. So the spamming, definitely one of my top pet peeves. It needs to stop. There's way too much of it. Oh my God. I need, hopefully within a few years time, uh, Instagram and some of these other sites will be way more effective as far as sort of weeding out the spam there. (laughs) But Yes, you can only hope. But well, and and yeah. I, I'm sure you see this too. There's also this huge prevalence of so-called experts that are teaching people <laughs> how to do this. That yeah. this is an actual tactic out there. It just it, it blows my mind. Oh my god! Yeah, I know. Span. It, it doesn't exactly have the most positive connotation there. <laughs> so it's surprising no. people going all in on it. How about quirks? Is there anything that you tend to do that? maybe your husband or someone else or, or your two chihuahuas call you out on for it? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I don't know about calling me out. Uh, I will tell you that it's something that my whole family laughs hysterically at, which is when I start laughing, I start snorting. <laughs> that's like a- It can be super embarrassing. Oh my God. That's uh, I haven't seen it, but I believe it or not, my parents are big into it from time to time. Uh, Peppa Pig is just like that, isn't yes. it? Just- <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah, God. <laughs> so I, I don't, they don't necessarily call me out. They just die laughing and they will try to get me laughing hysterically. just So I do it. I, I haven't heard any snorts yet. Not but yet. Maybe, Not maybe, yet. Maybe, yeah, maybe we we'll get to the end here. <laughs> There'll be something. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for it. No, you got me on a mission here now too. <laughs> okay. How about weird talents? Anything that you're really good at that isn't part of your normal day-to-day at work? Oh, well, you know, I, I think I'm going to have to tie this back into fruit. <laughs> oh, there you go. You took the challenge. <laughs> That's right. Coolest party trick. I can tie a knot in a cherry stem with my tongue. Oh, boom. There you go. There you go. Oh, if only we had video of this, we'd have to do it. <laughs> if, you, if you had cherries on hand, do you break that out a lot? Is that like, is that Dang like- it. A- I guess uh, cherries would actually have to be in season, right? So I can't do it all the You're time. You're the fruit expert. Have, so. Yeah, no. <laughs> but it's one of those crazy talents you just don't lose either, you know, no matter how mm-hmm. little you do it. That's impressive. I've actually, I've only seen that in the movies. So you are, <laughs> you're, you're, you're real life Hollywood. <laughs> uh, that's right. Uh huh. I don't just live here. I, I, I've learned how to live it. Yeah. <laughs> and for anybody that's looking to move out there, make sure you practice with a lot of cherries first. <laughs> okay. Let's wrap it up here with some rapid fire Q and A. Are you ready? I am ready. Bring it on. All right. Let's get wild. What is your favorite place you've ever traveled to? Ooh, uh, I would say Prague. Prague is beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. And I know you're big into cycling as well. Yes. 
what's the longest distance that you've ever cycled? And have you been in the Tour de France? <laughs> ooh, ooh, two great questions. Okay, so the longest distance, my dad biked across America. And oh my God. I, yeah, I did not. <laughs> but I did a 60 mile stretch with him. Might have been 70, okay. but 60. Yeah, yeah. So that that was my longest distance with him. And then Tour de France, his wife actually rode in the Tour de France twice. Oh. I have not, but they actually <laughs> just went back uh, this last year and they weren't in the Tour de France, but they did that whole section. They cycled that whole section where she had ridden twice. And so, yeah, it would be an awful lot of fun to do something like that. But I've joked around with her about her training me to do something, but I cycle, so I do about, you know, 20 miles a day, but I definitely cycle more for health and enjoyment than <laughs> getting out there and winning a race. It's a whole different animal, but I, I <laughs> talked about doing it, but it would be a lot of fun. Yeah. But hey, 60 miles is no walk in the park. You probably ride through a lot of parks, but it's no walk <laughs> in the park there. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it was tough. It was a, <laughs> and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> what is your favorite part of living in LA? If you had to pick one thing, that's your favorite part. Oh, gosh, that's tough. You know, I think it's the ability where I live, I can walk everywhere. So uh, everything from my favorite restaurants to my hairdresser uh, is all within walking distance. And I love the fact that I live in a place where we do have, you know, about 360 probably days of sunshine uh, and warm temperatures that I can get out, get some exercise exercise, but also never have to drive. People are always amazed by the fact that I, I might drive my car once a week if I'm at home. Of course, I travel a lot because I'm on the road speaking a lot, but when I'm home, I really try uh, not to have to get into my car, which makes LA so much more enjoyable. I saw this morning that there was uh, backups and delays because of the rain, and I guess there were some pretty oh. major accidents. People were stuck on the freeway for like an hour, two hours because of it, and I thought, ha, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no that, well no. well said not my life <laughs> no and that's hey anytime you can avoid that infamous la traffic you have to so last question here you had to know this was coming what is your favorite fruit <laughs> ah that's tough because i love <laughs> i love 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 fruit uh, so it might change on any given day, but pineapple. Pineapple is always right up at the top. All right. That was rapid fire Q&A. And that was our interview with Rebecca. Rebecca, thank you so much for hopping on the podcast there and, and dodging all sorts of traffic to record today. <laughs> Of course. Really, really appreciate your your gems, your your wisdom, and learning more about your backstory, your your life spanning from fruits to everything else and beyond. So really, really appreciate it. And for anybody that isn't connected with you yet, where is the best place to connect with you and also your businesses and podcasts? Anything else you want to shout out? Yeah, well, they can find me online. So RebeccaRadice.com is the best place to start and then anywhere else online. So whether it's LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, it's all at Rebecca Radice. Kept it nice and simple. So nobody has to wonder or try to find me. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And your podcast is Brand Authority Podcast. Exactly. Yes. So iTunes, uh, but again, anywhere that you uh, listen and subscribe to your favorite podcasts, you're going to find me there. Brand Authority Podcast, as you said. Fantastic. You can find them in all the same places that you can find the Wild Business Growth Podcast. How about that? <laughs> there you go. Simple yeah. enough. Awesome. Well, I know that you got to run soon and you're probably really, really hungry for lunch, especially after this conversation. Last thing here, the stage is yours whether it be about fruit or anything else, what are your final thoughts you want to end with? 
My final thoughts would be based on everything we just talked about is if you're, whether you're just getting started in social media, dipping your toe into promoting your business across digital marketing, just do it. Just get out there and, and start to have conversations with people. Don't be afraid to start to do that little bit of outreach that I think we gave a pretty solid outline today here. <laughs> of how to go about doing that and how to uh, pick those five people every single day. It doesn't have to be convoluted. It doesn't have to be some crazy, huge amount of research. It could be as simple as who are those people that would benefit from your product, your solution, your service, and how can you start to create a conversation? Because conversation turns into connection and connection is what opens that door into opportunity. So don't put a whole bunch of roadblocks in your way. Don't say, I've got to do all of this before I start. Just get started. There you have it. And anybody out there, you know that one of those five people per day could be Rebecca, especially if you just saw her eating at Wendy's, reach out to her and make <laughs> something happen. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rebecca. We'll catch you next time. Sounds great. Thank you. All right. That was Rebecca Radice. Shout out alliteration. If I could roll my R's, believe me, I would. Thanks again, Rebecca, for coming on. Thank you, all you listeners out there, for tuning in Wild Business Growth Nation. If you enjoyed this episode, please, please show us some love and give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. It only takes a few seconds on your phone. At the time of this recording, we're up to 7.5 billion reviews, so just a few more. That pretty much covers everyone out there. Connect with us at Hippo Direct for all your marketing and business building needs. And you can connect with me personally at Max Brandstetter. At HippoDirect.com, we have everything you could want as a passionate marketer and business person. Sign up for the Hippo Digest, your weekly recap of creative marketing. And reach out to me at Max at HippoDirect.com if you are interested in starting a podcast of your own. That's all for this week. Until next time, let your business run wild. Bring on the bongos!